Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams and welcome to an area where I used to film all the time but haven't in a long time. Today we are back for another unhaul clean out of my shelves. These are shelves that kind of sit in this in-between area from my living room where Jordan's bedroom and the library and the bathroom are on this side of me and over here are the kitchen and my bedroom and this little room which I'll take a picture and show you in a minute, is I guess what I call a den. I'm not exactly sure what this space is meant for. It could be an office area. I just kind of have it set up. I have a games cabinet in my piano. Eventually I'd like to get either a bike or a, a treadmill or a walking pad or something in here. This is my space where I am planning to declutter in the month of February. Well, here we are on the 22nd <laughs> and I haven't done any decluttering in here yet. So today is a day to get that started. And then I'm gonna start with these two shelves behind me. They're identical, but there are two of them. Well, like, clearly there are books on here. So that's what I'm gonna mainly focus on, but it has just kind of become a catch-all for plants. This is the room that gets the best sunlight in my house. I am north south facing so i don't get sunlight on the ends of the house but this room has a window right on the side of my house so i do get great morning sunlight so i have a ton of plants on a little shelf and on the windowsill right across from me and then i have a ton of plants on this shelf as well uh so yeah i'm gonna just kind of clean up this shelf with you so i'm gonna turn you around we're gonna take a look at these books mostly and what i have on this shelf and hopefully I can clean it out. I don't have a number in mind for unhauling because honestly, I don't even know what's on these shelves. I haven't used them in a long time. <laughs> I used to use it a lot more regularly, but now that I've created a library room, that's what I use for the majority of my choosing and videos and all that stuff. So the shelf kind of has been a bit neglected. Let's take a look at it. Here is the room from where I'm sitting. It's not a very big area, but I have a games closet with more games and puzzles stacked up top and some dead plants I need to really take care of. Here's some decluttering stuff from other places. I don't usually sit in that chair anymore. I really probably could get rid of it. It, it kind of hurts my back if I sit there for too long. And then here's another chair that I just picked up from Facebook Marketplace a long time ago. And here is where I practice. So you do see that view a little bit. And of course, all of my little plants hovering by the window, getting the most needed light that they can. All right, for a quick overview of these shelves, up on top here, I've got some plants, some decor, <laughs> tchotchke, <laughs> the Little House series that I found at an estate sale, some little boxes, more plants. Down here, I have photo albums. It's a good spot for them. Here is a mishmash. I used to participate in fiction guild and those are books that were sent to me some series there books that were sent to me here and here and here and here so I have books that are sent to me that I just have not been reading shame and then down here I have old journals some new some used and a lot of dust this is my little container for book sleeves and piano music, crafting stuff, like a mishmash of things there, and some nonfiction down there. So let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. Okay, so I'm going to start with this shelf in here. This book, Eye of the World, I think I'm going to unhaul. I at one point thought I might try this series, but it's 17 books long, and look at them. I just don't think that it will happen anytime soon. I can always get my hands on it again if I want to. So that's going to be my first unhaul. This should go in with my Mildred D. Taylor books in the other room. It's part of the same series as Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. I believe this is the first one. This stack here are for <laughs> giveaways slash books I already own, but I find them for super cheap and... I have a stack of them in the other room. So we've got The Tale of Despero, Matilda, Fish in a Tree. I don't know where this one came from. Jill Shelvis, I'm gonna put this in my Pango pile because I don't know about this one. And this also is going in my Pango pile. Actually, I think I might actually add this to my book of the month shelf because I've heard good things about it. And now I'm kind of curious. So I will keep this one. 
the Anthropocene reviewed. It's a book of essays, nonfiction. Okay, so all of these are going to be Christian fiction. I might keep some of them, but I'm hoping I'm going to try to unhaul some. And I think this is one that I'm going to unhaul. I'm not familiar with this author. I feel like it can go and I won't really miss it. I am going to keep these Melanie Dickerson ones. I think, oh, here's one more. The Warrior Maiden. I can't remember how far I've read in this series. If I've already read all three of these, I've got The Noble Servant, The Orphan's Wish, and The Warrior Maiden. I'm just going to look on Goodreads. If I've already read them, I will probably add them to Pingo because I'm not collecting the series, but I do want to read the whole series. So I just need to check. I can't remember because there's so many in that series. I'm going to keep this one by Sarah Ella Coral. I believe it's a Little Mermaid retelling. I'm going to keep this Irma Joubert. She's an author that I would really like to try. This is Child of the River. Which one else? I'm going to keep Move these over. I am going to keep this Christy Cambrin one. I have read the first book in this Lost Castle series. I think it's called The Lost Castle. And this is Castle on the Rise. I don't remember if it's the second book or the third. Definitely keeping that. And then of the rest of these, oh, I love Sarah E. Ladd. So I'll keep A Stranger at Ellsworth. That's an author that I've read before and really liked. So I'll keep her. I don't know anything about the rest of these. So you guys will have to let me know. I might hold these separate. For those of you who read Christian fiction and you know my taste, let me know if I'll like these. A Daring Venture by Elizabeth Camden. We have Colleen Coble's Freedom Light. We've got The Heart's Appeal by Jennifer Delamere, London Beginnings Book Two. So this is a sequel. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my Pangle pile because I have not read the first one. All Things Bright and Strange. This cover is very appealing to me by James Mer Markert. I'm curious about this one, so I'm going to hold on to it. What Blooms from Dust is another cover that I just really love by James Markert. That's the same author. Let me know if you guys have read this author because he's got great covers. I don't know. Murder at the Flamingo. I think I will keep, although I'm not sure if it's the beginning of the Van Buren and DeLuca mysteries or if it's down further in the series. I'm going to put this in my look into it pile with the Melanie Dickerson books. And then I have Shelley Shepard Gray too, An Uncommon Protector and The Loyal Heart. These are from the Lone Star Hero series. Let me know if those are any good. I'll put them in the hold on to it pile. Because these are so low to the ground and there's not as many, I think it's just going to be easier if I sit facing the camera. I am sorry though if you can hear my laundry. <laughs> I just realized I probably should have waited until that was done and until I put makeup on. I didn't do any of those things yet today. Whoops. So here we have two VHS tapes. I have no idea what these even are. Oh man. I know somewhere I have a tape of my dad's funeral from 1997 and I don't know if these are that. I don't know where I, there's gotta be somewhere I can take them and like check them. I don't know. All right. These are things that were sent to me. I have this oh, creation magazines. My friend in Pennsylvania passed these along to me. I don't think that I will honestly ever read them. So I'm going to put those, I'm going to pass those along. I have the Confederates physician by Allison Blasdell. I just don't honestly think that I'm ever going to get to this one. I feel bad. This is the part that's really going to like make me feel bad because <laughs> so many of these authors kindly reached out to me and sent me their books and um, I just haven't read them and I feel really bad about that, but I'm going to pass this one along. And then my mom gave me these ones. This is an author who's local to her, The Painting on the Pond and A Walk in His Moccasins, both by Sharon Lewis Coho. I am going to pass these along as well. Then we have Leo, Inventor Extraordinaire by Luke Cunningham. I'm going to put this on my middle grade shelf. I think it sounds fun. I like sci-fi. I like middle grade sci-fi. I like the shape of this. And the first line of the back says, a school for incredibly gifted orphans. Okay, number one, orphans is in there. Number two, it's set at a school. And I just feel like that's a Krista read if I ever heard of it. So I'm going to keep that one. And then we have The Accidental Suffragist by Galia Gishon. This is an advanced reader copy. It came out quite a while ago, years now. Not going to read that one. And the same with this one, Gossia Nealon's The Last Sketch. Poland in 1944, World War II story. I am going to keep this one because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's called The Mutant Mushroom Takeover. This is by Summer Rachel Short. It just looks so fun. 
a little mystery middle grade i'm gonna hold on to this one what is this envelope the murder chronicles oh i think this is a murder mystery i should do this on a vlog sometime there are clues and then there's the solution here this is fun I might, I'm gonna hold on to this and maybe do it in a vlog at some point. Down here on the bottom of this corner are nonfiction books that I've read and loved. So we have My Utmost for His Highest. I really just enjoy this devotional book. It's a day by day, day by day devotional. So I'm gonna keep this one. I love this book, Being Mortal by Atul Gawande, just about illness, medicine, and what matters in the end, about growing older and elder care and all of those things. I just really love that one. I really enjoyed A Fine Romance by Susan Branch. This is a journal memoir of Susan and her husband traveling to England and they go to a lot of literary sites, but it has beautiful little watercolors and photographs of her time and the font is handwriting. It's her journal of her trip. It's a lovely little book and she has a couple others I would love to read more travel memoirs from her. That's so good. A Christian nonfiction that I've loved is The Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. We did this as a group read on my channel a couple years ago. Educated by Tara Westover. I really liked when I read it. I don't think I'm going to read it again. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my Pango pile. Uh, this one is a more of a cult memoir, The Sound of Gravel by Ruth Werner. Again, a book that I don't think that I will read again, but that I really enjoyed about a woman who escapes from a fundamentalist Mormon cult. Oh, this is a booklet that I made about my dad. I don't a few years after he passed, I had people write me letters of memories and things and I kind of compiled it with some photographs and things. Yeah, that's a good memory there. All right, also down here. Okay, good grief. This is the 35th anniversary edition of The Hiding Place. I was wondering where I put this. Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. Fantastic, I'm keeping this. The Sun Does Shine is the memoir of Anthony Ray Hinton, who is one of the men that Brian Stevenson worked with. This is one of my favorite nonfiction books ever. The Lazy Genius Way is more of a self-help type of a book. 13 principles to embrace what matters, ditch what doesn't, and get stuff done. I loved it. I loved it. Very practical. Oh, The Road Back to You is my favorite nonfiction about the Enneagram. Hind's Feet in High Places. I have this in a beautiful ed um, edition, but I think I will keep this little one as well. And the same thing goes for The Hiding Place. I have both of these in that engaging visual journey edition, but I'm going to keep those ones too. Leading from Your Strengths is a like a leadership kind of book. One of those quizzes that you take and it tells you stuff about yourself. <laughs> I have the results of my quiz somewhere too, so I'm gonna hold on to that. I love this little book from Watch My Knee, Sit, Walk, Stand, a little devotional about Ephesians and Ephesians is my favorite book. So I'll be keeping that. Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. I don't know if I need to keep this. I've really enjoyed this memoir. I don't think that I will read it, or this biography, I should say. It's not a memoir. It's a biography of Louis Zamperini, and it was so good, but I probably won't read it again. Sacred Marriage by Gary Thomas. I'm going to go ahead and pass along as well. I had to read this for a marriage and family course back in when I was in a Bible school, um, and I thought it was really helpful even for friendships and any kind of relationships, family relationships. Specifically, it's written for marriage, but I did get a lot out of it. I just don't think that I will read it again at this point in my life. Crazy Love by Francis Chan, I am going to hold on to because sometimes we just need to be reminded about how much God insanely loves us. <laughs> Sacred Rhythms by Ruth Haley Barton is a book that's very similar to Celebration of Discipline, just talking about different ways and rhythms to bring into your life. To, to connect with God. So good. Ordering Your Private World, I remember really loving. It's been a really long time since I've read this one, but I did really, really enjoy it. It's one that I could see myself reading again, so I'll hold on to that. And then Our Broken Hallelujahs is a book that my cousin wrote, Rebecca Bertram, just about grief and coming to God with our brokenness and how he receives us and what helps walk us through those times of life. It's a little bit of a workbook or to be meant to be used as a Bible study. Yeah, I'm just so proud of her for writing that. And my story is a part of the, the beginning because she speaks about my brother. Um, she speaks about my dad's death. And that was like the first major death for most of the people in my generation and my family. Um, and it was such a shock that it, it, it was, 
it was life-changing ultimately it's not just for me and my immediate family but cousins and aunts and uncles as well so yeah i'm just thinking as i'm going through this shelf these this might be a good place to bring more of my nonfiction. I was trying to think about what I want to actually put out here. And I think nonfiction might be the way to go. And then I can move book of the month over to my nonfiction shelf. I might be rearranging things a little bit, but I like the idea of having nonfiction out here. All right, I'm going to scoot you over. And I like that I'm kind of getting some dusting done at the same time. All right, let's move this way. Okay, let's move this little fella. For now he needs to be repotted that's too big for that pot okay over here i'm not really sure what to do with these photo albums Oof, i need to go through them one of my goals this year is to go through my photo albums all of my photos and kind of declutter a little bit but for now we're just going to keep those up there. All right, so here we have some more books that were sent to me. I have Dwarf Story by Professor W.W. Marplot. This is one that I do not think that I will actually read. It is a middle grade. It reminds me of Lemony Snicket, who is the author of the series of Unfortunate Events, but Lemony Snicket himself is kind of a fictionalized author, right? And I think this is the same situation. I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to read that. Animal Control, The Hero's Apprentice is by Travis Howe. And this is another one that I just don't think that I'm actually going to read. So I'm going to pass that along. I feel bad. I am going to keep this one, Simone Lafray and the Chocolatier's Ball, middle grade mystery. I just love a mystery. <laughs> so I will keep that one. I am going to keep this one too, The Ventriloquists. Oh, I just love this cover. It has the typewriter down here. This is an ARC of it, um, but it's about journalists in World War II. It's kind of a chunk of a book. It's pretty chunky, but I just, I'm intrigued by this one, so I will hold on to this one. And then Karen Wright, who has a channel, Run Wright Reads, wrote this book called It's Complicated Short Stories About Long Relationships. And I'm going to hold on to this one because I love Karen and I got to meet her in person. And I'm sorry, Karen, that I haven't read this yet, but I am definitely interested in reading from her. What she put together. Okay, this one, Ellie Normal, is by Kate McCarroll Moore. I do not think I'm going to read this one. Passing it along. The Frog Boy, or just Frog Boy by Carolyn Blevins. Also going to pass that one along. I am going to keep this one. This is by Jennifer Adam, and it's The Last Wind Witch. This is an ARC. This is out for sure. This is out now. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that cover looks so amazing. I'm just curious about that. I think it's going to be like medieval setting and magical. And I'm intrigued by that combination. I'm pretty sure I have this on my shelves in another time by Jillian Cantor. I think this is a extra copy. So I'm going to check into that. This is really beautiful. This is a book journal from Barnes and Noble. I'm pretty sure it was sent to me. It's actually just a blank. It's actually just a blank lined journal, but I'm going to put this up on Pango because I have plenty of blank lined journals and I don't need another one. But it's kind of nice that it says book journal, but you could do with it what you want. It's just blank on the inside. And then The Daughter's Tale by Armando Lucas Correa. I have other books by him on my shelves. I don't think this is a duplicate, but I will be keeping this one. It's back here. I don't know what these little short stories are from. I'm not going to read these. The Nightingale and um, Holiday. I don't know where these came from. I'm just going to pass it those along let's see oh I've got a <laughs> a little bag here with lips on it that has letters um, this is for my my board up here my letter board that says books and jams so many books so little time and these are the extra letters for that so I should probably take them all apart from here put them all in here that would be handy it would take up less space junk I have just a canvas bag one more chapter. I will use that sometime in my Pango pile. When people purchase more than a handful of books, I like to give a little extra goodies. What is this one? A travel reader thing that holds your book open. 
another thing that I can include with Pango Pile stuff. What else is in here? Oh, this little game, Iota. This is going in my games closet. I feel like this came probably in an Owl Crate Junior box at one point, Iota. The great big game in a teeny weeny bin. That's going in my games closet. Wanna see all my book sleeves? Oh, <laughs> uh, this one is special to me because I sent Lindsay this material. One of my siblings had a miscarriage and when she was pregnant, I was gonna make a quilt and she liked the yellow and gray. So I had a bunch of different yellow and gray materials. So I sent all of the fabric to Lindsay to turn into book sleeves and then I got a book sleeve made out of that fabric. So that's kind of special to me. I have this springy yellow one, more of a fall plaid here. These are mostly, I think all, almost all from Lindsay's little library, her shop on Etsy. This buffalo plaid one, I think she sent me this one with a Christmas book exchange one year. This is from our road trip virtual reading retreat last summer. She created these that people could purchase. So cute. This is just a bookshelf. Most of these are large. These ones are all large size. These ones are a little bit smaller. So they're better for those trade paperbacks. This one I don't think is from Lindsay. It might be. Marauder's Map. This is a Harry Potter one. And then this last one is just feathers. I need to get some more specifically winter. I need to get more. Like I need more of these. But I would like to have one or two that are specifically winter prints but I'm just gonna wipe this out and these are gonna live right in here. It's a perfect little spot for them. Okay, and last but not least, this section is just empty. This one's an empty journal. This one I'm gonna get rid of, Kidman Nation. I got this from a, a conference that I went to, so it just has notes and things from the conference. So I'm gonna look through that and see if there's anything that I need to keep and then I'll pass that along. I have an old Bible that I used to use. This is New American Standard. I have a, not a problem. It's a good thing, right? I, col I collect Bibles in different editions. And so at one point I wanted a New American Standard. So I have that Bible. Let's see. Here's a Jesus Centered. This says Jesus Centered Journal. This came with a book, the Jesus Centered Life and there is a Bible as well, the Jesus Center Bible. And I think I might've actually got the Bible, but that is a blank notebook. This one is called Be Still. And I this is a guided journal for Bible reading. So today's scripture, you can write out the verse or just the reference, journal the word, like as you're reading it, what comes to mind, um, adore, what does this passage teach me about God and his character? And then apply based on what I've learned about God. How can I be more like him? So this is just a Bible reading journal which I will hold on to because I might use that at some point. The Armor of God by Priscilla Shirer is a Bible study that I have started but never finished. So I'm going to hold on to that because I love her. And then this is the Gospel Primer Journal, an eight-week guide to transformation and community. This one I'm going to pass along, put on Pango. It's a Bible study notebook focusing on the go the gospel. This one is used in old notes, sermon notes journal. I'm gonna keep those used ones. This is a 2018 planner, oh my word. So I need to look through and see if there's anything I need to keep in there and then I could probably get rid of that. This is another old sermon notes channel. Oh my word, my friend's baby. He's now like 14. Yeah, those are fun to look through. That's from 2010. Here's another planner, 2019 planner. I will look through that as well. And then another used sermon notes one to look through. Trash, two more. This one is blank, I believe. I'll put that with my blank notebooks. This is just a random, I should, I should use this up. It's like notes about things and it's, I've already ripped out a ton of pages. I just need to either throw it away or use it. The only section I haven't done yet is this one here. It's mostly piano music. I'm going to move these two. These two are crafty things. Oh, that's music. That's all piano stuff. Um, I'm going to keep this sticker book and this hand lettering practice book with my crafty things that go somewhere else in my house. This is all piano music. I'm going to see if I can maybe put it here so it lays flat. 
but this stuff is going to stay because my keyboard is right here. It just makes sense. And then I think I'm going to put nonfiction out here and I'm going to clean this off and organize it a little bit better so it's not quite so crazy. So I'll bring you back in a little bit when I get all of those things done. I've got my work cut out for me. I'm gonna try to do it in 20 minutes. I'm gonna set a timer and see how much I can get done in 20 minutes. So here we go. I'm gonna start clearing it off first and then we'll bring books out here. Fun, fun. brought out most of my nonfiction and I kind of love it. So on the top here, I put some plants back up there. I put all my C.S. Lewis books right there, except Chronicles of Narnia, but actually I might move those in here as well. Some more plants, my little sign, so many books, so little time. And then I have nonfiction, not my Christian nonfiction for the most part. These are other nonfiction. I kind of love how the plants hang down onto it a little bit. I think that's really pretty. We have more in there, some of, some of my tchotchke stuff. I moved my piano music to there. This little stack is my read-along books for this year. Then over here is mostly memoirs and biographies in these sections down here. I really like how that looks. I moved my photo albums down there and then my book sleeves in the corner. And this pile are the ones I'm getting rid of. There are 24 there. And then I have these five, six that I need to look into a little bit more and see if I will keep them, if I've already read them or if they need to go. All right, so that is it. I have cleaned out my shelves in this room and I'm really excited. I can now say that I've decluttered in this room in February. That's the goal, at least a little bit of decluttering. I probably will do some more things in here as well before the end of the month. But I love having my nonfiction out here. Number one, because it's not something that I look at all the time. I'm really excited about moving my book of the month over to my old nonfiction shelf. I think it will look really nice there. And I'm just, I'm just so pleased. I have a lot to go through and get rid of. <laughs> I have a lot to put up on Pango. And the shelves just look dusted and nice and organized and much prettier <laughs> than they were when this video started. So thanks for coming along this journey with me. I know many of you have loved this series and so have I. <laughs> it makes me really excited about the shelves and the books that I have, the ones that I'm keeping. And I just think it is worth the time. It's worth the time. So let's chat down below, especially that pile of ones I'm a little unsure about. Um, if you read Christian fiction, should any of the pile ones that went into my unhaul pile be kept because you love them? Let's, uh, let's just chat about that or anything else that you saw in this video. I would love to talk with you down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and spending a few minutes of your day with me. I really appreciate you being here and I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.